Welcome back, everybody, to Rob's Metalworks. Yes, we are here in the streets of the Alamo City, only to welcome our own prodigal son. Yes, the man, Roman Sermon of Wednesday 13, is here back in his hometown, sir. How are you doing? Such a privilege to have you. I'm doing well, very well. How many years has it been since you've been in Rob's Metalworks? Dude. Can you, do you know? I don't, I don't fucking know. I think that was like 2002 or something. I don't even know. <laughs> probably something right. like that. 2003. I, I think you're right. You know, uh, a long time. And now, you know, I, as I was telling you off camera, so exciting to see that your career has just evolved and blossomed uh, since your time when we talked in medicine tongue. Um, but, you know, you you're doing lots of great things and we have to first talk about Wednesday 13 uh, I was a huge huge fan of condolence still am very heavy record talk a little bit about um, that piece of work because when I heard it I was like man Roman's rocking on this fucking record that record was actually uh, really personal and like there's a lot of weird stuff going on with the band at the time as far as like really dark shit and you know people dying and you know uh fred from medicine tongue you know yeah, yeah. like he just recent like that was fresh off the heels of that and like we had some other deaths in the family from other band members and just just lots of just a cloud of just negativity over us and we made just a really sad heavy record and i don't know it was just it was probably the coolest coolest and hardest experience ever that I've ever had doing that. So. It was well received. I became a huge fan of it. And as you recall, when when I saw you at Paper Tiger and I was interviewing Wednesday, uh, we talked a lot about this record. I was a huge, huge fan of it. It was really heavy. I mean, this is probably the heaviest Wednesday 13 record ever. Yeah, it definitely was. Definitely. For sure. I mean, we also had, you know, a lot of time to work on it as well. Like, we, this is a different album we had all got together in the same room and like dudes in a room writing it together and you know before it's everyone send your demo in and we'll figure it out later but i don't know it's just cool he had mentioned that this was a collaborative effort and i think that before we're like you know he was writing all the stuff now it was like okay let's get people involved and i got a good guitar player i got a, a band that has been with me you know five six seven years now let's get everybody involved how how, how do you kind of feel that that kind of really helped shape the record. It was cool. Like he and I have been writing for a few albums together, but he wrote predominantly most of the stuff, and you know, just bring a few riffs and we'd polish it up and here and there. But like having everyone there doing it is so much, so much easier and so much better. Like a lot of times I would play bass on records, and I'm like, why am I doing this when Troy is like <laughs> ten thousand times a better bass player than I am? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, a lot of it was just cost effective too. Like I, me and him would be in one place, and you sure. know, but. I don't know. It's just dudes in a room writing is the way to do it. <laughs> and now it's so exciting because you're coming off such a very acclaimed release. And correct me if I'm wrong, isn't the new record ready to come out? It's not ready to come out. It's okay, it's, it's ready to be mastered. Okay, cool. Well, but, uh, all the hard work's done, though. Yes, all the hard work's done. and But uh, I think, I, I don't know if I can say when it's coming out, but it's, it's going to be a little while. But... Uh, it's cool. If you like condolences, you'll like this one. Talk a little bit about it, because I've, I've read some things where Wednesday has said, you know, condolences was really heavy, but, you know, what's the sense in getting heavier? Let's do something a little different. And uh, so talk a little bit about that. What is the direction of, of this new record? The new record's very 80s horror movie. Very, I know that's kind of the whole shtick of the band, but, like, it's very, very much 80s, like, almost like, neon lights and video games and like Freddy Krueger and like just yeah. like very John Carpenter like it sounds like John Carpenter yeah it sounds like every John Carpenter soundtrack ever threw up on our album and it's it's pretty good I like it it's very fun I heard that um, also too like you know you had some people come in I heard Roy uh, Mayorga from Stone Sour came in and did some keys and stuff he's done all the uh, he did all the all the keys all the all that stuff and he used all the real uh, like he had all the original like keyboards and like the Prophet 10 stuff that like actually like John Carpenter used and people stuff that existed back in those days. 
to make these sounds. So it's not any new stuff. It's all 80s synth, real, real synthetics, real stuff like that. He did that. Um, we've got, we've got a lot of guests on there, but we can't really say it at oh, the time. Oh God! I was hoping to spill the beans. Nah, I can't. I can't really spill too okay, much. Okay. Okay. I can't really. Um, I know. But uh, there's definitely a lot of guests on the album. But it's not like a guest album, but there's definitely some guest vocals or some guest other kind of things. But nice. you'll, have to, you'll have to wait and see. But it's One of the things, too, that I loved about Condolences was it, it just sounded so fucking like, tight on the stereo, man. It was so like, great. There's a lot of like, sonic landscape and stuff. Um, Zeus has produced this one. Yeah. What do, you, what do you guys dig about, uh, you know, producing with Zeus and, and, and stuff like that? Zeus is cool. He, he, he's easy to work with. We worked with him on the last Murder Dolls record that I was a part of, yeah. Women and Children Last. That's where we met him, and he and I were just a good team. Like, we would just knock stuff out every day. We, we work well together, but uh, we actually got to go to his house and his home studio and do this nice. one and, like, just live there for a month and, like, do condolences. So that was... Where was that at, where was that at for the people out there who don't know? Uh, the studio? Yeah. Uh, I, I believe he lives in in New England somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, because you know why I don't know? is because I spent literally a month in the basement and saw sunlight one time. Wow. One time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I work for a lot. I'm either a lazy bastard or I work solidly for months. So. Sh share with the people out there the title of the new record so that way they can keep it on their radar. The new album's called Necrophase. And it will be out. <laughs> tell us a little. Can you tell, share a little bit? Of, I know. I know. Wednesday does a lot of writing lyrically, but can you share a little bit about the title, Necrophase? Necrophase is kind of a a thing that I, I, it's more of a question for him because okay. he had he has these like uh, he had some weird like almost like a night terror kind of a thing that he used to have like these nightmares and stuff, and he kind of like derived a lot of the the lyrics and a lot of the the imagery that you'll see in the artwork yeah. and everything uh, off of these like insane nightmares and stuff <laughs> it's definitely not something you've seen before that's for sure cool cool but uh now too like one of the things too that i've kind of really loved about wednesday and and what he's doing with the band is that you know i know he's a fan and you too like are, of all kinds of stuff not just heavy stuff but like outlaw country music and and r and b and all this stuff and because of that it's like you really can't pigeonhole Wednesday 13, the band. It's like, cause you guys kind of do it all, which is really cool to me. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's also fun about being in this band. It's like, if it's any kind of rock and roll, aggressive music, metal, death metal, rock and roll, punk, any of it, he's kind of covered it well before I even got there. I mean, yeah. he, he's kind of covered it. So we can tour with bands like Cradle of Filth and yeah. have a set list that's going to fit right in. We can tour with Combi Christ and, you know, we can tour with different bands and cater that set list, you know. Of course, that, the fans, everyone's going to be mad that you didn't play the one song or whatever, but <laughs> we can kind of fit in. As long as it's kind of slightly aggressive music, we can kind of fit in there. So, it works. And I was going to get into this in a little bit, but you kind of mentioned it. I mean, you're, you're not new to Wednesday 13. You've been with the band for a while. Yeah, well, actually was, uh, I was actually, to talk about Baby Steps, I started off as a guitar tech and just became sound guy and then became just the idiot that you hire to go on tour because he has the best fart jokes or whatever. Oh, and by the way, I played badass guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Let uh, me show you. I was always the guy that was like, hey, I can do it. And he's like, well, 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 uh, you know. But uh, I just got dumb hair and I joined the band. That's all it takes. <laughs> Gotta look super cool, man. <laughs> I wish I had a then and now photo. Yeah. I me. might add it in the interview. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you should. It's pretty drastic. You guys uh, are always on the fucking road, man. You're working all, you're really like a really a hard working metal band. Yeah, and this year I think we have May off and that's it. And, wow. and that's just part of May. I think we're doing something every, all the way up until December. And I think we even have plans first of the year. So this, is the, this will be definitely the most touring we've done this year for sure. But um, I mean, not to, not to get into specifics, but Necrophase won't be out till next year. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like to see that. See that? It'll be out. Uh, it'll, Who knows? It'll when be out label says. in months. Yeah. Yeah. But nonetheless, whenever it does come out, people, Necrophase will be out on Nuclear Blast Records. So be sure to look for it uh, when it comes out. I'm sure all the press will be out there. Um, and so tell me a little bit. Uh, you guys are on the stint. 
uh, with Cradle. Obviously, you know, it seems like doing support work, because you guys have done headline shows. I remember the last time I saw you guys, you were on a headline run. Um, how, how beneficial is the support work for the band? How advantageous is that for the band? It's very, very much so. I mean, it's, yeah, the thing about our band is, especially since I've been in it, we've, we've always headlined. I mean, like the last, since, since we've been in the band, we opened for Comedy Christ on this last run we did, and then uh, we're doing this, but, uh, and then we've got all the Static X runs coming up. Yeah. But um, that's amazing. I mean, it's, it's a whole new, there's tons of people who never even heard of us before, yeah. which is, I mean, the whole point, you know, that's the whole point. But right. I like seeing the, the fans in front with their arms crossed, and then by the end, they're singing fuck songs with us. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, so it's like, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think it's great because it's kind of, you know, even though with support tours, you kind of have to pay to get on, but still, you're broadening uh, your audience and people are going out and buying your records and, and su supporting your band and, and then coming out to the next show to support uh, Wednesday 13. So um, can you share any, any more specifics about maybe like what later uh, this summer and, and the fall will hold for the band? Uh, we're basically attached to Static X for most of those runs. Um, cool. Yeah, I think for all of them, we're doing Australia, UK, Europe, um, and yeah, we're doing lots of stuff with them. <laughs> now, now I, I, I called you our prodigal son. You are, I mean, you're from here in San Antonio. I've known you for a long, long time. Um, it must be pretty fucking rewarding to come back here and and be playing a big show like this at, at uh, Aztec. I, I know you, you live in the Northwest now, but still, um, this is where it all started for you. Yeah, I mean, I I haven't been here in man a couple of years, but uh, I've I'll always end up back here. I just I love it, but I I really like the fact that we're playing here today at the Aztec because this is one of my I think I left when they started doing shows here, and I was always like, man, <laughs> now they want to do shows there, yeah, you yeah. know? So it's really cool to actually you know not that our shows before here have been bad. I mean, we've played the Rabbit. Or Paper Tiger, whatever, Carova, you know, wherever. They're always good, but uh, it's nice to have a humongous stage and a, yeah, it's really nice. There's gonna be like young people watching this interview and they're like, man, look at this guy. He started here in San Antonio and it, it, and that could be me, you know? That's the beautiful story about Roman is that young musicians can feel like I can, I can do it and be successful too. This guy did it. For those young people who watch our show, what's the best advice you would give them? Say thank you and be appreciative and don't be a prick and learn. Just learn. If you got to go out and be a guitar tech, you got to go out and help the singer put his jacket on every night. Go do it. Just learn how it's done. Learn what not to do. Yeah. That's more important. There's a lot of people in this business that they lack humility? They're, they're there for the wrong reasons, and, yeah. or they forget why they started, and just just be just be appreciative of what you got, and say thank you, and don't be a dick. <laughs> I'll just say, I'll just say learn. Learn and go out there and start from the bottom up. Don't go out there expecting to put your foot on the monitor and have your hair blowing back and be a famous dude. It's not gonna happen. You what, what has served you uh, the best in your career, you think? It's not only it's not only being the humility also too, but I mean shit. If you couldn't play the chops, you would have never got hired, either. Well, it helps. I wish I was better than I am. I'll be honest, but uh, I think it's just 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 pay attention and learn. Just learn learn the right way to do it because you, as, especially as a local band or just a local musician or anything coming up, you spend so much time working in the wrong direction, yeah. and you try keep trying to work in the wrong direction. It's it's just about being at the right place at the right time. It's what it is. Off camera, we were kind of talking about, you know, the, these baby steps. When, when do you feel, obviously now, you know, you're, 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 you're in a really solid band, you, you've been in this band, you're doing great things, you're recording. What was the turning point for Roman? And, and when I look at your career, I kind of say, to me, I think it was the, it was the Murder Dolls incarnation. Was that the turning point for you? Well, sure. I mean, yeah. I, that was kind of big. Yeah, it was a big deal. I I didn't even expect it to, to be in that band, to be quite honest. Um, I was I had been doing stuff with 
this band Gunfire 76 yep. with Wednesday. It's like a side project he did, and he asked me to do that with him, and it was like 2009. And I had known Joey from a from touring with Pitbull Daycare and Ministry and stuff like that, and I had known him from from back then, and I had known Wednesday separately, so they kind of had not a falling out, but they hadn't really talked yeah, in yeah. a while. So they're like, let's get this guy, let's get this dumbass that we know, and he'll kind of be the mediator and film. I was going to film the whole recording of the album and all that, and and uh, they just asked me to do it, and I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, that that's kind of what started it, and then Wednesday just kind of kept some of that band for the solo stuff, you know, yeah. so, yeah. I know that he's he's very proud that he has a band uh, that's been with him, not a, not a rotating cycle of musicians who are in and out, because he's smart enough to know that, you know, you're not going to build consistency and strength and cohesiveness if you're rotating people in and out all the fucking time. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely had his members, but I mean, we've had this lineup for for a very, very long time yeah. now. I mean, yeah, geez, it has been a while. I'm, I'm like, it's, <laughs> it's been a very long time, but yeah. it just it just works, you know. Some guys don't work out. Some guys leave for other reasons, and that's just what happens. He just needed guys from Texas, is what he needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's let's. I hate to you know. I have to reminisce a little bit. You know, you grew up as I mentioned earlier in the SA music scene. Uh, and I remember at that time it was it was quite a dynamic fucking thing. There were so many cool bands at that time. Some were heavy, some were more melodic. When you think back about your time in, in SA, what, what what are your fondest memories? What do you, what comes to mind first when you think about your time in in this scene? The White Rabbit hanging out. <laughs> there you go. Hanging out at the White Rabbit and <laughs> drinking too much and watching. You know, even the bands that, that we thought sucked back then were awesome. <laughs> That's just how it was. You know what I mean? It's just like even the bad bands were, were awesome. Like, it's just you just have stacked bills and everyone just worked their ass off. And, you know, you know, <laughs> um, it was just it's just fun. You know, it's just that guy just taught everyone how to work and how to work for it. And, you know, Rick Scarafa. Yeah. How to That's work for it. About, Rick Scarafa. Rick Scaraffa. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. awesome. He taught you what it was like to not get paid. <laughs> and do it for the love. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, Jaime? For the love. For the love. Yeah. Well, I'm all out of love now. <laughs> but back then, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Roman, as we get near the end of this interview, just a, just a couple of questions or two. Um, we have to talk about your guitars. I saw that you're playing a new guitar. Yeah. Um, Sully Guitars. Talk a little bit about that. Sully Guitars. Texas company, too. Um, yeah, I was with another company for years, and uh, I met this guy, John, John Sully Sullivan, at uh, at NAM a couple years ago, and he's like, "You should, you should go with this." And I'm like, "Nah, I'm doing, doing this other company." And so Wednesday signed up with him, and he gave a guitar to Wednesday, and ah. I played it, and I went, "Oh my God, I messed up." So what, what'd you like about it? Uh, everything. It's just, it's just, it's a mix between everything I've used before. Like there's a certain model called the Raven that I just really like, but. Uh, they're just damn good guitars, and they yeah. don't weigh a ton, and they're just, yeah. and they, they just look so cool. I don't know, they just look cool. <laughs> and this guy, like, he's he's like a one man show. He he hand makes all his own damn guitars. He, he's legit. He's he's cool. the That's closest cool. thing to a wizard I've met. <laughs> I and mean, that involves great craftsmanship. Yeah, very much so. He's definitely smarter than I am. <laughs> and which which is you use kind of like the, the body style kind of similar to like the Explorer, right? Yeah, I was using like a like a exactly like a Explorer kind of style, and I also also was using like this other body style. It's kind of more like a it's called a Phoenix. ESP used to make it, but oh, okay. it's called a like a Firebird almost. And so I've got two guitars from him that are just I've I can't complain. I've, what, I've, what does he call his style? Uh, one's the Alita, the Explorer one's the Alita, and the other one's the Raven, like the nice, Fiber cool. one's like the Raven, but yeah, cool. I'm in love with them. I'm are they both, are your guitars both black? Yes, matte black. <laughs> but we're supposed to do some like, uh, custom, like, custom one with like some crop circles in the fretboard and some light up things and some fun stuff, so I, look for that. I saw like this really cool like gold glittery one and, and this bubblegum glittery one that were like really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thrilled to death with, to be with this company they're nice. treating me good too i love it nice. yeah. good people good people you got us you got to support the home team too very much good guitars made by good yeah. people
Roman, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I know it's hometown shows are always kind of crazy. Any last words, anything I miss for people uh, in your hometown or people across the world who will see this interview? I miss the tacos here. Oh, God. That's about it. <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, nothing. Just keep rocking and come see in our band and come go check out the local scene. What's the local scene like here? It's, uh, it's, it's, actu it's actually very diverse and there's a lot of great young bands that are just like so fucking heavy and good, man. And good. Yeah, the only thing that's different from back in the day when, when we were doing it is that there's just so, you know, because of social media, I think people are, are just in their own little silos. It's not as cohesive as it used to be. Yeah, I miss it. I miss it here. And I'll probably end up moving back here, I'm sure, because I always come back, but I miss it here. It's great to have you, my friend. Awesome to Good you. to see you, God. You know, as so many years ago that we did this, hopefully uh, we won't have to wait uh, no. so long for the next time. We will not. We'll very soon. When Necroface comes out, we're talking again, and we're going to get you on Wednesday. That will be in... I can't tell you. But soon. Yes, very soon. But soon. Remember, everyone out there, the brand new one from Wednesday 13 is called Necroface. It will be out within the coming year, for sure, on Nuclear Blast Records. You saw the man, Roman, only right here on Rob's Metalworks.